Okay, maybe we can get started. So um, uh, it's wonderful to have Thomas tell us all about uh, total positivity. Again, it's supposed to be reasonably gentle, and then yeah, so not gentle. all about that. Uh, a little bit. About. A little bit about. Thank you, Nima, and welcome everyone. Um, uh, so. Uh, <clears throat> A rather general definition of a uh, matrix uh, uh, yes, totally no negative. Uh, TNN for short. Um, if all the miners are negative, so so in particular the entries are real. Um, and it's totally positive. If all minus are than zero. So I'm not going to um, do a historical survey. I think the, maybe one of the easy things to say about general properties of totally positive matrices is that um, is a result, I think, from the 40s of gap matter and crime. Um, who showed that. Um, uh, M so uh, M so M N by M matrix. So if you've got a square matrix which is uh, totally positive, then all the eigenvalues are positive and different. That's one of the early results about total positivity, and um, I, I don't want to. I don't want to give a, um, a survey of sort of what started that um, uh, investigation. Is that yes? the identity matrix not totally positive? Uh, the identity matrix is totally not negative, but it isn't totally positive because there are lots of which zero. minor. Which are not principal miners, just the, the, any miner, any old miners. All miners, yeah, so up in the corner. Yeah. 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 yeah, so all entry, so in a totally positive matrix, all entries are positive. So, okay, so that's a good question. So, a, a special, uh, um, a, a, a theorem close related to this theorem is something called the Terran Fabinius theorem that says that if a matrix has, it's only got positive uh, real entries, so instead of asking for minus, you just ask for entries, then it has. Uh, it has a positive eigenvalue, and that is the largest eigenvalue, and it has a multiplicity one. So that's sort of a, that's a sort of a cousin of this theorem, which is um, uh, 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 which actually can prove one from the other. Okay. Um, so I want to focus today on sort of uh, a very special situation where I want to sort of explain some uh, general qualitative aspects of the theory. And so I'm going to focus on looking at. Um, total non-negativity in, in this space, U, um, uh, the space of 3 by 3 uniform matrices. Um, so A, B, C, and I are scalars. So sometimes I, I want them to be complex numbers, sometimes real numbers. And then um, the uh, U greater than equal to 0 are the matrices in here, which are um, totally non-negative. So, so A, B, C, where, where we have the conditions A greater than 0, B greater than 0, C greater than, sorry, greater than equal to 0, and then there's one minor, which I'll call delta, A, C. And so we're, we're trying to understand what this space looks like and some features of the space. But also, uh, by convention, we can also talk about the totally positive part of U, and strictly speaking, um, uh, there are no totally positive points in U because there's zeros down here. Um, so when I write this notation, it means um, the minus that are, can be non-zero have to be positive. So, so, so now I just, if these conditions, I have to make them okay. So if this is a subset of 3 by 3 uh, matrices, upper triangle matrices. Um, so uh, I think uh, Lauren already uh, sort of um, explained uh, a little bit about the relationship between total positivity and cluster algorithms. 
So let's quickly see in this, in this example how it works. So we can take this uh, determinant um, and, and put the C on the other side, and you, you see that um, the relation looks like this. Um, so you can also write it, sometimes you might write it like this, or, or you, you might write it like this. Um, so in particular, if you know that, if you wanted to, if you wanted to cut out this portion of 3 by 3 matrices, you only need to know that um, delta C and A are positive, and then B will automatically be positive, or you can know that delta C and B are positive, and A will automatically be positive. So we have um, terminology is we have these two plus um, this uh, A delta C um, and B delta C with this single with this single exchange relation. Um, uh, <coughs> So hopefully the following, uh, following language is familiar. Um, Lauren can correct me if this is not what she said, but this is, I would call this an A1 uh, cluster algebra with two frozen variables. Oh. And the uh, E tilde matrix is, looks like, like this. Okay. Um, so I'll say a little bit more about this later because hopefully I can connect to Lauren's lectures that I unfortunately missed. Um, okay. So uh, so let, let's try to understand these points. Um, so just this is some collection of three by three matrices. Let's try to understand them. And the way we're going to first try to understand them is to use something called lone uh, windy reduction, which is to try to. Um, Start with a matrix that belongs to here and make it simpler by doing row reduction. So we'll take a matrix and let's just suppose A, let's just suppose it belongs to this um, set and, and maybe it's generic in some way. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to uh, kill off the en entry C by using a row operation. Um, so I can write it something like this. Um, so this matrix is what you get by taking um, uh, this matrix and adding minus C over B of the second row to the first row. And then you kill off the, the C. If C was non-zero, you'll kill it off and make it zero. And what we notice is that, um, well, it's obvious. Uh, so the claim is that this matrix left over here, um, when we do this, also belongs to, also satisfies the non-negativity condition. And, and the condition now, but now notice that the condition that this entry um, is, uh, uh, is uh, non-negative dependent on the uh, original minor being non-negative. So um, previously there was a condition that delta, delta is greater than zero and so is B, and, um, and that gives me that this minor is non-negative. And this is, a, this is a general statement, so I can take n by n um, upper triangular matrices, and I find the sort of first place that, um, first place that there's a not, sort of in the upper right, that there's a non-zero entry, and I perform a row operation to make that um, entry zero in the sort of, um, and there's a unique row operation that will make the entry zero, and the result will still be totally not negative. And it's, um, the proof of this is some sequence of uh, determinant identities. Um, we can make we can go a little bit further and um, and 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 also row reduce this guy and eventually we'll get to a form that looks like this. We can write this guy as <coughs> assuming, assuming that it's totally positive, so um, all the minors are strictly positive, then we can write it um, as a product of three by three matrices. Any questions so far? Or corrections? I know there are lots of experts. Yes. Was there a good reason that I didn't use the bottom row to subtract C times bottom row from the top row? 
Oh, if I, ah, okay, um, yes, that, 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 also gets rid of, that also gets rid of the C, but that matrix that you use, so the feature of this factorization is you factorize into matrices that are totally not negative. Wow, your factorization, this is a good question. So you, you are asking why, why should I not do this? Uh, one, 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 C. So this looks like a much simpler thing to do, which doesn't require any determinant identities. The, um, the thing that I don't like about this factorization is, while this guy is a token non-negative matrix, this guy is not a token non-negative matrix because the minor, this minor here is minus C. <laughs> okay, so so I, don't, I don't want to do this. And, and so the theorem, uh, lo, uh, Norman Whitney theorem says that every token non-negative matrix can be factorized into things like this, and um, and these things are all totally non-negative, so they're generators of the totally non-negative part. So let me let me formulate that. Um, so so we'll define x i of a to be this matrix, uh, where you have like one in a, just a single spot, you put an A, and that's in the I, uh, I flow and I plus plus column. And uh, uh, the theorem is that um, U greater than zero, so this works for n by n matrices, but I'm, I'm just going to do three by three matrices in examples. Uh, U greater than equal to zero is the semi group <coughs> generated by. X i of a for so i goes from one up to n minus one and a is some uh, positive real number and so it's so one that so the direction that I said is actually the harder direction the easier direction is that anything anything that's a product of matrices like this is automatically totally not negative um, and that uses the Cauchy Binet theorem which says um, so if you have so the claim is that if I have two matrices A and B, and A is totally non negative and B is totally non negative, then this implies that A times B. So that's, um, that's because the minus, minus of this matrix are sums of products of minus of these two matrices. Any questions? So these are these are the generators of the token non negative part, and um, there's uh, there's a little addition to this, um, uh, which is what are the relations um, of these generators. And I think it, it's a little bit surprising to me, but I think whereas this theorem is very old, it seems like this the, the relations were only written down like maybe 20 years ago. So which I, I call them those six uh, great relations. Um, so the, the relations in this three by three case are the following. So, um, so we have two we have two sets of generators x one of a and x two of b a greater than zero b greater than zero. So these are my generators, and the relations are um, uh, you can do x i of a times x i of b, and this is uh, just x i of a plus b, um, and then the other relation is x i of a. One x i plus one b c uh, is given by this formula. Which is an identity for three by three matrices that you can use And for n equals three, you don't really uh, so three by three matrices you don't need it, but there's also Another relation that you need is if you're doing bigger matrices. Um, so, uh, so uh, a claim uh, a claim is that um, if I have some way of writing um, of factorizing a token or negative matrix into into matrices of this type, 
then two different ways of writing it like this can be related by these relations. Those are all the things you need to. Um, and one feature of these uh, uh, one feature of these relations is that, and, and somehow it's, it's sort of clear that it has to have this feature, is that if, if you put in positive, if you put in positive real numbers here, the parameters that come up will be positive. So the most interesting one is this brain one. Um, so if you put in A, B, C are positive real numbers, then these have to be positive real numbers. It, but it's a little bit better than that. Not only is it if you, it's numerically positive, if you plug in positive real numbers, these are actually things called subtraction free rational expressions. Um, and um, um, the, the advantage of it, which was already noticed when this was written down, is that um, uh, so there's this transformation here, which is which if you give me uh, three. Uh, uh, positive uh, real numbers, you can send it to um, uh, to this uh, the bijection. Um, so this formula, this formula gives me a this formula gives me a bijection from um, three positive reals to three positive reals, so a one to one map. Um, the inverse just looks the same, basically. No, um, the inverse map looks the same. Um, this uh, this map um, has the has the feature that it can be tropicalized. Um, and so you can take uh, this uh, bijection um, and you can trop it. And what it does is now I can. Think to take three, uh, uh, three, nu uh, three numbers, which could be. Uh, uh, let's, let me just say that they're three um, integers, but they could be reals. Um, <coughs> and instead, and I'll map it to. Um, um, what I'll do is I'll replace multiplication by addition and division by subtraction, addition by minimum. And the fact that this formula is invertible with a formula that looks identical to it um, shows that actually these formulae are also invertible with a formula that looks identical to it. And it, um, it sends three real numbers to three real numbers, but it also sends three integers to three integers, and it's a bijection. Um, and in fact, it's, it's uh, even a little bit better than um, formulae that we encounter in cluster algebras. This particular one sends uh, three positive integers Sorry, three non-negative integers to three non-negative integers. So, so going back to going back to my three by three matrices here. One, um, um, if uh, if all the minors, if all the four minors of interest a, b, and c, and a, b minus c, if all of those four minors are strictly positive, then we can write it as uh, we can write it in this form as. Um, And you can write it as x1 of a, x2 of g, sorry, not a, uh, x1 of s, x2 of t, x1 of u, for some s, t, and u which are positive in a, in a unique way, in fact. Um, uh, but there are some, there are some uh, totally non-negative matrices which aren't totally positive, so some of the minus can vanish, yes? Okay. So because of the braid relations, this, there isn't a unique reduction or decomposition like that? That's right. But, uh, um, is, is once I've specified it's 1, 2, 1, then, then, it's, you're fine. then it's unique. Yeah. But I can also two, write two, it. One, yes, two. that's correct. But Jake is pointing out that there's also a way to write it like this. 
Is there a natural uh, uh, ordering on the space of reductions that you can say that there's a canonical? Uh, so so what? Uh, so one of these two, I forget which one corresponds to what I said. Yeah. What I said was I look in the rightmost row that there's a non-zero entry, and I use the I use the the entry below it to kill it. That gives me a particular ordering, and that, yeah. that's a canonical way. But you don't. Uh, this is uh, this is because I'm preferring to kill off entries. I can also try to kill off minors that are like I can instead of trying to kill off C, I could try to kill off delta, and that would give me a different order. Okay. Anyway, this piece this piece is a three-dimensional subset. Um, it turns out that this is uh, the, the, this this space of um, so this is just u greater than zero. This space is just r uh, <coughs> zero uh, just the power. Um, but there are actually uh, many other pieces in this space, and it turns out there's a natural stratification. And the way we stratify the space is according to which minors are strictly positive and which minors are just non which minors are zero. And um, let me draw a picture. Oh man, this uh, this this is a this is a picture. I think, for example, in, in one of Nietzsche's uh, papers. Um, uh, so, so we have A, B, C, and then we have, and I'll explain the edges in a moment. Um, <clears throat> if I classify the uh, token or negative matrix, three by three upper triangular matrices, according to which minors are positive and which minors are zero, then it turns out the classification has six possibilities. I can have all the minors be strictly positive. Um, I have to set up this thing as well. I can have all the entries be positive, but the two by two minor be zero. So that's this space. Or I can have. Um, all the uh, all the minors and entries be positive except for this entry, um, and then and, and these are two dimensional spaces and these are one dimensional spaces and this is a zero dimensional space. No. So those are the this is the classification. The, those are the possibilities and and the theorem is that they're n factorial um, n factorial uh, possibilities in general. Um, uh, so the, the edges I drew, so in this case it's a little bit boring because um, you have edges to everything with smaller dimension, but the edges that I'm drawing in this picture indicate that um, matrices of this form are limits of matrices of that form. So um, I can take a matrix that looks like this and by taking a curve in the space of matrices that look like this, I can produce a point of this form, any point of this form. So the way we say it is that this forms a cell, so this is these matrices is like a two-dimensional cell, and it's in the closure of this three-dimensional cell, and so on. And a picture. So, what? what how is how is this glued together? And, and a picture. Um, uh, that's so. What, one thing that's slightly bad about this is that this space is not compact. And an idea that I think is uh, is Misha's idea is to um, is to intersect uh, intersect this topological space with. Uh, uh, with, with a condition that will make it compact, um, and then it's easier to draw what this space looks like. Um, uh, oh, yeah, let's, let's actually just draw it on top of this in a different color. Um, so let's intersect with, um, we'll intersect with the condition. A plus B is equal to one. <coughs> So uh, the condition is that the entries just above the diagonal um, add up to one, and if we intersect uh, 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 these spaces with this additional condition, all of these uh, cells will drop in dimension by one. This is this um, this is a one dimension uh, one co-dimension um, slice of the of the space, and then we get a picture of the space, and the space looks like this. Uh, 
Um, and this, this somehow this, this slice, this slice doesn't intersect um, this cell, so, it, it, so it's empty here. So uh, this was a one-dimensional uh, one dimensional piece, and when I intersect it with this condition, I will get one point, and I'm just drawing that one point, and that's this point. And if I intersect this piece, I get one point, that's this point. And so the way the whole space is glued together looks like this. And if I want to get rid of this condition, then I just take the cone over this, and so the, the whole space looks like, kind of like this, and then we make a cone, cone over this, and this is what, um, this is what u greater than a to zero looks like. So attempted drawing of this together with the stratification. Um, so in, in in the general n by n uh, n by n matrix case, this is a, a conjecture of uh, of niches with Sergey Fomin, and um, it was proven by Patricia Hirsch. So what's the conjecture? Yeah, the. the um, the conjecture is that there, there's a picture looking there is a picture looking like this, and and this thing is a ball, um, together with well, actually better than a ball, but let's just say is a ball. Um, but I don't know if you're saving this for a punchline, but in general, is this the Bruja ordering, and these correspond to Bruja? So yes, that's correct. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I I will say that in a moment. So let me say this. Um, so the, in general, let me let me remind this. The, Precise statement is that u greater than equal to zero is the cone over some closed ball <coughs> of some dimension. Um, okay. Uh, so, right. So, so the, the question just now um, was how is this related to the Bruja ordering? And um, let me let me phrase it slightly differently. Suppose I gave you, um, I, I said it's there's n factorial possibilities. So if you give me one of these, if you give me one of these matrices, I should produce for you a permutation. How about produce a permutation for you? So if you give me one of these matrices, uh, okay. So here's here's an example matrix that belongs in the zero. And I want to produce for you a permutation. Um, uh, here's, here's one way to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do, do row reduction, but in a different way to how I did it previously. I'm going to do a row reduction, but in a way that's not, uh, not positive. I'm going to start in the top row and find the rightmost non-zero entry. Um, uh, that's this guy. And I'm going to use, first I'm going to uh, make this a pivot one. So, um, by, so I can change this order one. So I scale the row until that's a one. So I'm doing some first version of the Gaussian elimination, but for upper triangle matrices in a slightly unusual way. And I'm going to use that one to kill off these two entries. So these tilders are row operations. Half one. So I want to make this zero. So this will. So Minus half, I think. And then minus half. And then I, so I use this one to kill off the entries below it. I repeat for the next row. I find the rightmost non zero entry and make that a one. And I use that one to kill off all the entries below it, which is actually pretty easy. Um, and then I, I then make, do the same thing with the last thing. So I end up with a, a row echelon form of this. This is uh, a particular direction to do Gaussian elimination, and, and this is the row echelon form I get. And the locations of the ones gives me a permutation. Uh, so this permutation is like three, one, two, or, or maybe it's inverse, depending on your conventions. So this matrix, this matrix <coughs> belongs, uh, it belongs to a cell indexed by three, one, two. Sorry, can you say more direct? The, the Bruja cell I think of is I've got two Borels in relative position, and I thought you would tell me that this cell is like I take a positive part of one and intersect it with a positive part of the other or something. Is there such a description? Uh, th that is exactly what I'm saying over here. Oh, no. um, so, so let me, maybe I can write, okay, maybe you prefer writing it simple. So, um, so uh, U, W, so if you give me a permutation, I can define this as. And so, for example, for example, u greater than zero three, 
3, 1, 2 is all 3 by 3 of the triangle total in the negative matrices, which happen to have the form that it's, um, it's a, a lower triangular matrix times this particular uh, permutation matrix times another lower triangular matrix. So, so the one one lower triangular matrix is the is the stuff I was doing, and the other lower triangular matrix is is deals with these guys. So the fact that um, the fact that this intersection the fact that this intersection is a cell is a, a theorem of Busquets. <coughs> Somewhat more generality. These are just uh, upper triangular totally positive matrices. Yeah, just upper triangular and, 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 and the complete general totally positive <coughs> matrix is sort of built uh, out of. Can it be built out of two of these permutations? I mean, I, I know that there is a pair of permutations associated with uh, uh, yes, a yes, general. The, the, so you yes, just do it yes, from the left upper and yeah, the right. Yeah, yeah, you have to do both. Right, right, you do right. both. You, you, you multiply you check two. what right. you get when you do uh, Gaussian elimination this way, and then you take the original matrix and do Gaussian elimination the other right, way, right. and check which permutation you get the other way. So the most general matrix is a sort of product of, uh, of things that are... Right, so the most yeah. general stratification involves uh, uh, Something that looks like this, and another thing where you have <coughs> upper triangles here, and another permutation, and there's also a diagonal part. There's a little diagonal piece. Yeah. Okay, let me. Uh, um, uh, sticking still with three by three matrices, um, let's go back to this. Let's go back to this formula and. Let me write it. Maybe maybe I'll use T one, T two, T three. Um, let's write this product of three by three matrices. <laughs> we get it looking. Uh, so we get a form looking like this. And I think where uh, many of us here are familiar with doing the following thing is uh, we have these uh, three, um, three parameters, t1, t2, t3. We, we often like to write down the following d log form, which is um, dt1 over t1 wedge dt2 over t2 wedge dt3 over t3. Um, and, uh, and in fact, the, the parameters, so this map where you take t1, t2, t3 to this matrix is, is where you think of t1, t2, t3 as non-zero, let's say, um, um, uh, is injected into here. So this actually gives, uh, uh, this formula here actually gives me a map from um, c star 3. So 3, uh, I'm using c star because I'm about to write forms. You can also think r star if that's what you prefer. Um, so non-zero complex numbers, I map this uh, into this u uh, this space U. So this three by three upper triangular matrices has sitting inside it three, co three copies of non-zero complex numbers. And I have the following form, um, uh, D log T1 wedge and so on, and it lives here, and I can think of it as over here because of this inclusion. Um, and now we can ask, so uh, one of the questions that uh, we would like to ask, and um, well, uh, one of the things is that um, many in this room like to ask is uh, try to integrate things over this. Um, but let's just ask a few things about what this form looks like. So first of all, first of all, let's notice that um, um, if I change to the other parametrization, this form, um, this form wouldn't change. So, so, so these are some remarks which are actually easy to check. So if I write x1, t1, x2, t2, t1, t3 is equal to x2, T1 prime, X1, T2 prime, X2, T3 prime, then this, uh, then we'll have this thing is equal to the prime version. 
and that's just a local check, and that's not, not half the check anymore. No words. Sorry. Oops. Let's put the plus or minus. <laughs> thank, thank you, David. <laughs> uh, I, I laughed when we did that to Namer like 10 times <laughs> during the semester. <laughs> but now that is happening to me. <laughs> Um, okay, and but there's also another slightly different. So, there, so these are three parameters to uh, uh, to coordinate this uh, um, uh, sort of an open piece inside here. Um, but there were also these other three parameters that we could have used, which were the two clusters. So, um, an alternative also was that there was this. Uh, we could. I said earlier that, that we had two choice of clusters. Um, Cluster one was this guy, and cluster two was this guy. Um, and what's the what's the formula that relates the two? So, um, so for example, I let's take this cluster. Then the formula for this is B is equal to T two, delta is equal to T two T three, and C is equal to T one T two. So actually, um, because I was smart in choosing which cluster to use. Uh, these uh, uh, these these uh, minors are monomials in these uh, these parameters here t1 t2 t3 um, and in particular we could also say that this this uh, d log form is also plus or minus d b over b d delta over delta d c over c and it is also plus or minus d a over a we should have used a instead. Is the form just DA, DB, DC over ABC delta? The whole form? I mean, if I wanted to. Oh, if you wanted to. The analog of, yeah. The, the, is it just the, the form with the form? Okay, so we, we can try that. So yeah. you're, uh, yeah. I'm not sure, but so you want me to take delta, which is yeah. um, A, B minus C, and D it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Delta is. Um, you only care about DB. You only care about the minus C. Right. No, the minus DC, but you don't care. Yeah. We only care about the DB part. Yeah. Just over here. Right. Um. And I, if you're saying I want to place, put this and put it in here, then I will just get, I'll get. It's also equal to plus or minus. Uh, the A's cancel out, so I get. D A D B D C over C delta. Okay. Well, that's that's a good, yeah. Th this is a good point because um, uh, one of the things that uh, um, we'd like to know is where the poles of this um, where the poles of this form are, and um, and we we naively stare at this formula and. Um, but let's say let's say this formula it looks like it's got three poles. Um, but actually, this, uh, the corresponding cluster variety um, let, me, let me try to explain this um, has two tori um, uh, inside it. So so let, let me work let me work in the in this choice rather than the t choices. So if we look at um, This uh, three-dimensional torus, this is sitting inside U. And it's sitting inside U um, as the subspace, uh, well, uh, well, what is it? So it looks like matrices where um, A, B, C, where, um, where it's possible for B to be 0. Um, but all the other minus have so A, A is not 0. C is non zero and delta is non zero. And then there's another torus which corresponds to B delta C, so another cluster torus that sits inside here. Um, and that corresponds to B is non zero, C is non zero, and delta is non zero. I mean, all the same form. So, so it's possible, uh, uh, so in this, in this space, it's possible for. Um, this entry to be the zero, and in this space it's possible for um, this entry to be zero. And the whole thing is a three-dimensional space, and it's being covered by these two cluster tori. Um, uh, it turns out that that's not actually the cluster variety. The cluster variety has one extra point. No, 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 
if the B equals zero, then C has to be zero and delta has to be zero, right? Yeah. So it's up to k dimension two. So it's uh, it's a whole no, 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 up to k dimension two. You are not allowed A and B plus B zero. No, no, no. I, I, my point is you are allowed to have A and B plus B zero. I'm, I'm not taking positive points. <coughs> these are now complex points. And I'm taking the union oh, of right. I'm taking the union of these two tori. Um, so let's see. So they overlap in a really big piece. So let's see the union this thing. Uh, and if they sit inside uh, this thing is sitting inside my U over complexes. And there's one, there's one point in the cluster variety which is not in the union of these two cluster tori, which is, uh, sorry, not one point, a one dimension, a uh, co-dimension 2P, which, is, which looks like this. Mm -hmm. So this has, uh, um, C is not equal to zero and delta is not equal to zero. Anyway, these are, I, I don't know if these are um, Lawrence conventions for, um, for cluster varieties, but my convention for cluster varieties are that the frozen variables are um, are not allowed to be zero, but the mutable variables are allowed to be zero. So in this case, the cluster variety, the cluster variety is covered by this torus, this torus, and this uh, one dimension worth of extra stuff. Um, uh, but what I wanted to say is that this form, this form here that, uh, uh, that a lot of you like, this, uh, this guy here, this formula, this formula shows that it's well defined on this torus. The second formula shows that it's well defined on this torus. And Hartog's theorem says that um, uh, uh, it's also well defined over here because this is uh, lower dimension. I mean, this is lower dimension. Okay. So actually, this this form is well defined on the whole uh, on the whole cluster variety, which is the union of all of these kinds of matrices. Sorry, Thomas. There is also invariant two two form, right? So what uh, yes, the relation? Right. Um, is it any relation between this invariant three form and two form? Um, well, the invariant, uh, the invariant, the invariant two form uh, wedge one of the frozens, one of the d log frozens is equal to the three form. I'll talk more about this in the second course. Yes, uh, I'll tell you, tell you what all the forms are from this time. So, so the reason why I wanted to do this was because this. this kind of the, the starting point of my second talk. So, so in, in particular, it, it seemed, as I said, it looked like there was a pole, um, it looked like there was a pole at B, at, um, but this formula shows that there isn't a pole at B, and it, this formula looks like it's got a pole at A, but there isn't really. Actually, there are only two poles that, um, two poles that belong to this part. There's some poles at infinity, this guy's not compact. Um, so they only put two poles along this part, and they correspond to sending c to zero or sending delta to zero. And those were exactly the two first moves you were allowed to do on a totally non-negative matrix. If I start with a general uh, totally positive three by three matrix, I can either kill off the c, which is kill off the top right hand corner, or I can kill off the two by two minor. And those are the two poles of this form. Because you make manifest in the invariant formula, right? In the D A D B C C over C. Oh, yes. Okay. That's, That's right. the one you like. Yeah. Yeah. Questions? Okay. So I had uh, apparently planned to repeat the same analysis for Krasnavians, but see if I have, I have uh, ten minutes to do this. So. Um, so let me give you the, let me state some facts about uh, what happens when, so, so this is the sort of basic setting that we sort of want to model for other totally positive spaces. Um, uh, what can we say about Grassmannian? So, so take integers k and n in this space. Okay, and, oh. Sorry, but before there's too little time left, I love examples. I also love general theory. Is there like some kind of statement that all cluster varieties have these totally positive parts and these invariant forms and all that, or is it mostly an example-driven subject right now? Uh, well, the definite. I mean, there's a definition. So if you give me a cluster variety, then if you give me a cluster of variety X, which is defined to be um, a stack of the cluster algebra, then there's this thing is. Just define to be the locus where um, x is strictly positive for all 
for log plus the variable. Okay. So that's that's the definition. And um and yes, on every on every cluster um on every cluster variety, there is such a form, which is product of d log of all um, cluster variables in one cluster. And that form is up to sign, um, doesn't depend on which cluster you're in. And then you have a stratification analogous to group out again, or what's that? Oh, no, no, you don't. So, so this, this is one of the, maybe, one of the important problems with cluster varieties is that they're, um, they don't have natural compactifications, which give you a boundary stratification. So, um, I mean, there, there is progress towards doing this, but this is, I mean, it's, it's something that we uh, don't know how to do in complete generality. If you give me a cluster variety, I just really have the top dimensional piece, and I don't know what the boundary looks like in general. Um, and it would be nice to know that. Yes. Actually, one of Nima's questions earlier, these two permutations that labels G instead of just the upper triangulars, is, is that some other stratification that I know yeah, about? Yeah, it's called double Bruja stratification, so if you look at B minus B intersect B, 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 um, uh, okay. and, and this is some subset, this is a subset of G. Um, and in the, in the case that we're studying right now, this B is always identity because all of the guys we were looking at were upper triangle. So we, we forgot this. Okay. Um, so let me try to um, make some statements in the Grassmannian case. So we consider uh, K by N matrices, um, uh, which are full rank. Um, um, and, and the definition of the total non-negative part is that all the minus Zero. Um, sorry, all maximal minus, sorry. So it doesn't make sense to ask the entries to be zero because those things aren't invariant at the GLK transformations. Because when we take the Grassmannian, we're looking at K by N matrices mod, mod row operations, which is GLK acting on the left. Um, so we're not allowed to ask about matrix entries. We're only allowed to ask about k by k minus. So the, um, instead of asking which minors are positive or negative, we, we only ask about which, minor, which maximal minors are positive. And this one, um, so if we have an x inside Grassmannian, we define its matroid, um, uh, mx, to be the um, set of k element subsets of 1 up to n. Um, such that the corresponding minor is non-zero. So the maximal minors are called Fuka coordinates, and this is my notation for them. So delta sub i, i is, I is a, k, uh, a subset of k of the columns to use. So given a k by n matrix, I will give you a collection of um, uh, uh, k by k minus, and that's the matroid of x. Uh, so, for example, <coughs> here's, a, here's a very easy and kind of boring example. If this is my x, which belongs to a uh, uh, GR24, then the matroid, the matroid of this guy um, is 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 2, 4, 3, four. So, um, there's one minor that, uh, what's this? Uh, one minor that vanishes, which is one four, and one four is not in here. Okay. So it, it turns out that you can do the same Lone and Whitney reduction on on uh, token non-negative uh, points of the Grassmannian as we did on upper triangular matrices. So uh, what do we do? So the same the same idea, but is that now you give me a point which is token non-negative, and I'm going to write it as another point which is token non-negative. Um, times one of these matrices, x, i, of t, um, t greater than zero. Uh, and the condition, the condition I want is that um, the matroid of x prime is smaller than the matroid of x, such that. Um, 
so it turns out that the way I've written it here literally it, it is not quite true. It's not true that you can always do this reduction this way. What happens is that you sometimes need to jump over some columns. So, um, uh, but uh, it turns out that when you jump over columns that are zero, for example, you uh, it doesn't affect positivity in a bad way. So, so earlier earlier Hugh was uh, suggesting that I could. I could do my um, reduction process in a simpler way by jumping over columns. And usually we don't want to do that because it ruins positivity. But actually, in, in the Grassmannian, um, uh, it's possible for some of the columns to be zero. And when you jump over those, it doesn't affect positivity. And you have to allow that. But, let me, but that's a subtlety, um, which let's not worry about it. But, uh, we'll, so we start with a, we start a matrix in the uh, total non-negative Grassmannian. We make it simpler. And what it means to make it simpler is we make the matroid smaller. And, um, and then we repeat, so we keep going. Um, and when do we get stuck? We get stuck when um, the matroid has only one element in it. Um, because then um, the, the matroid, uh, the, the definition of the Grismani is have to take full rank matrices. So at least one of the uh, k by k minus is uh, non zero. So the matroid is not empty. This thing is, the matroid of x is, this is not the empty set. Um, so I will get stuck at when, so we get stuck when um, um, the size of the matroid of x um, uh, is 1. What are the points in the Grassmannian where there's exactly one minor that's not vanishing? Those are exactly what's called uh, torus fixed points of the Grassmannian, and they look something like this. So. So, so this is a particular point in the Grassmannian, and this thing, the matroid, the matroid of this guy, just has one thing in it. There's only one uh, three by three minor which is not non zero. So, it's, so this is um, matrices that look like this, an identity matrix in some subset of columns. Um, so what we can do, uh, so I, I hopefully end by trying to connect to what I think Lauren is going to talk about in the next talk um, is uh, let's try to uh, let's try to draw a picture of how we went from our original matrix all the way down to these uh, torus fixed points so um, by kind of going backwards so I'll start with I'll start with this torus fixed point and the, the choice of the torus fixed point is a choice of the k columns to the identity matrix and um, by convention uh, the way we draw uh, we, we draw this uh, the following picture, and um, and we put five lollipops, some of which are white and some of which are black, and um, no one can remember this convention, but apparently here I use the convention that uh, uh, the columns the columns where the, the identity matrix is are white. Lollipops, and then the um, uh, the other guys have black lollipops. Yes. Okay. Oh, you you like that one? Yes, that is. The that, well, no, but you, you think that is the correct one? Yes. Yeah, Stephen, the, you think so too? Oh crap! I thought that was okay. Okay, so I'm going to say we're all on the blackboard, and half the people in the audience think those are black, and half the audience think those are black. <laughs> so you don't really need to say anything. So all the experts agree I got it right. So this, this, guy, this guy is represents this point, and then now I have to now I sort of draw now I sort of draw a picture of what uh, what reduction moves I did along the way. So if and and the row is the row is the following. If I if I apply something like XIA, then I draw a picture that looks like this. <coughs> and, uh, and you can also do, uh, um, this is a, a column operation in one direction. There's also something called YIA, where you add a column in the other direction. So this is an upper triangle matrix, and this is its transpose. Um, and then the, you draw something with the opposite colors. So that's... And so if I, if I if I'm interested in the um, in the point E one four five times x one of A times y three of B, um, then I would draw a bridge that looked like this between one and two, and 
Okay, there we go. And then put the value A there. And, um, and I would draw a bridge between 3 and 4 and put the value B there. Okay. Now, um, and, and so on, and I would draw a picture. And uh, one, of the, one of the main theorems is that this, this, this pictorial way of encoding things is well-defined and, and, um, uh, and, and well-behaved. Um, and let me, uh, let me say that in the, in the three by three matrix case, um, I, wrote down all the, I wrote down all the relations that these generators XIF A satisfied. Um, and, uh, and it turns out um, uh, what Posnikov did was to uh, write down all the relations that these pictures satisfy. So now instead of writing down these sort of xi of a times xi plus one of uh, b dot 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 equals something else, now I draw this picture equals another picture, and he drew a long list of pictures equaling another. But um, some of the so let me just draw some of these pictures. Maybe uh, I don't know if Lauren is going to um, draw more of these pictures. Do you use weights on edges? On yeah, the, the weights on the edges. So so this one, uh, all the edges that aren't labeled, we think of. One. But there's no uh, in this version. There's no directions. No, I mean not, not phase variables. Yeah, these are edge variables. Um, so one one of the relations, and this relation turns out to be um, sort of equivalent to Lustig's braid relation, which is this x i x one x two x one equals x two x one x two relation. Turns out to be uh, after some work, um, it turns into this relation, which somehow has a lot more symmetry in it. And um, if, uh, so Posnikov developed a theory of, of pictures like this, and what he did was he wrote down, um, wrote down the complete set of relations um, that these graphs satisfy when interpreted, when interpreted in, in the sense. Thank you. We're not clapping. We're not clapping. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll clap at the end of a second lecture. Yeah. Well, we have to clap for the end of the morning. <laughs> Not one clap for both of them, two claps. <laughs>